the Tower of Babel in the end times, could such a thing be possible? Was it, a, was it a symbol? Was it a happening that happened one time that it possibly could uh, repeat itself in a various way that it would be a type? Well, let's look at it. A student called me a question this week that started my mind through the Spirit working upon this thought that it was at the Tower of Babel that all people spoke one language. And their thoughts were to build a, a heaven on earth or to find a shortcut and thought by some to perhaps build a tower that would raise them above the flood, should that ever happen again, to find a way with God to, in a sense, become gods. And God confused that speech and basically in my opinion, as a student of the events or the, what history can be gathered from there, the world was broken into seven languages. And from those seven basically come every language we have today, from one or the other of those seven. So it would seem that God reacts strongly when the world wants peace, peace, peace. And what kind of, what kind of person does that make our Father that He would grow angry when they would cry, peace, 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 what's wrong with peace? God loves peace. As a matter of fact, His Son, the King of Peace, came to this earth. There's only one thing. In all His wisdom, He has tried to teach us there's no peace without God. And it is when man leaves God out of the process, basically, and tries to form something on his own, such as a tower that will reach heaven or we would have heaven on earth and we leave God out of it. Barely over an hour ago from the time that we're making this recording, the Knesset voted overwhelmingly to accept a visit to the peace talks in Madrid. And I have been saying for over a month now, with all the problems that were in the way of these talks that only God Himself by intercession could pull it off. Well, it's still quite a while till the 31st. That's when it's set for. How many of you know what the 31st of this month is? It's Halloween. Trick or treat. All right. That'll be the question. We'll have to watch. But there are many strange things about this. 500 years ago, as a matter of fact, we're celebrating it. The National Geographic has a, uh, or has just recently had an article as well as many others about Columbus discovering America. Well, as we know from our documentaries, when Columbus came into sight, here was a Levite priest, a Levitical priest, and um, an Oriental, and uh, some Irish um, Ogham riders, and... Leif Erikson's Vikings were there, not literally, but they had been here first. You know, we have no problem with that. The point I wish to draw from is what happened at that time. 500 years almost, well, this is the, what would you call that? The, what is the fifth centennial for 500 years? I guess it's according to what language you speak. <laughs> but this is it, nevertheless. Where did Columbus come from? Where did he sail from? Spain. What was happening in Spain at that time? The Inquisition. The Inquisition, 1491 and on into 1492. Is that a coincidence now that the world would go back to Spain, to Madrid, and they're all meeting and the subject is what? Any way you want to slice it, friend, Jerusalem, the Middle East, peace, 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 peace on earth, goodwill toward all men. May we all meet and may we all speak and may we all talk. And my mind, I tried to grasp how many different religions, not that this has that much to do with it, 
But there is only one Father, all right? And I suppose that out of the various and many religions that will be there, the very, what do they see him as? And I suppose that's not that important. <clears throat> if they were even adding in strongly that part of their beliefs, I don't think they are. I think they're looking at it, man can do this, we can do this, we the nations, the great united nations, we can accomplish this. Do you understand what I'm saying? Flesh is leaving God out, all right? I have heard very little in all the talks of, of bringing this group together, even Esau and Jacob, Russia will be there. It's, we've joined hands with them to sponsor this meeting on the 31st Halloween trick-or-treat in Spain. 500 years ago, Columbus leaves there, comes here, spots this great nation, and it is one of the superpowers, if not the superpower of the free world that will participate in these talks. All a coincidence? <laughs> I think probably not. When I stated that it would be by divine intervention that it would come off, and I admit it has not yet, though the last major stone has been removed just a little over an hour ago, about an hour and 15 minutes ago. It would appear that God has decreed this shall take place. And how fast things have been moving. Well, you'd better fasten your seatbelts because it could move a lot faster than this if things go well on Halloween Day. So, be alert, be sharp, and watch. For you are in that generation that many things, that generation of the fig tree, in which many things would happen. Don't go to sleep spiritually. Keep alert. I do not believe for one moment. Remember what happened just across the bay from here not very long ago. It was called Malta. Russia and America decided they were going to meet again. They met, but there was an awesome storm, the equivalent of the storm that drove Paul ashore there at Malta and the serpent bit him. Modern day presidents, ours specifically, could not even leave the huge ship he was aboard to make it into the city to meet with uh, Gorbachev. God said, it's not time yet. It just isn't time. That happened at Malta. So, time moves ahead. Events happen. Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 11. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. And we can learn from our Father's Word. There is much prophecy that is written in the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 11, you all know that that is the great time that man decided, hey, we just had one whale of a flood. That flood drowned a lot of people. We're not going to let that happen again. We, the united people, are going to gather together and do something about it. What was their era? They left God out of it. You don't do that, my friends. Each time that man leaves God out as he forms as a Malta group of children, such as the United Nations or One Worldism and so forth. Of course, what is the bottom line? We always know ultimately who the ruler of the One World system is. It's Satan. It's instead of Christ. The stage is being set for him, so don't ever lose sight of that. But that that happened is your road map. Let's pick it up in chapter 11 of Genesis, verse 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it is true. And Hebrew, of course, being the oldest. What was the one language? That was it. I believe that with all my heart. But the whole earth emphasized. The whole earth meets on Halloween Day. The whole earth 
sacrifice to bring itself to a one world peace system with the very center being Yerushalayim, that city of peace, the city of David. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. That's to say Babylon. You know where it is. We just had Desert Storm was exercised there. It's known as Iraq today, part of it. And they dwelt there. And it's the country of two rivers is what Sinar means, okay? And they said one to another, go to. Let's all go to. Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And the water won't melt them. We want something that will really withstand, all right? And they had brick of stone and slime, had they for mortar. Well, we know that they had also, it's almost the equivalent of asphalt, you might say, in certain parts. Therefore, we have a lot of oil comes out of that part of the country. Been burning a lot of it off here lately, unfortunately, in Kuwait. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Let us build heaven on earth that we may all sleep well at night without the thoughts or the worry of ever having an army overrun us or, God forbid, a hydrogen bomb or something of that nature. We can live in peace. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. What kind of name? One worldism? One world body? What kind of name can people... The confederated sons of man? You see, they haven't mentioned God. Let us make. God is left totally out. Listen, I tell you this, you listen to every report that you hear from these meetings and watch them Observe them, scrutinize them closely, and see if God is put into this midst. And I think you can rest assured, if He is not, even as He acted or reacted to this meeting, He will soon, possibly, I repeat, possibly to this one. You are a watchman? Watch. We're, getting in a, we're arriving at a very crucial time. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Looked at it. Came down. Now, you know, you know, it's so easy for for man to detach himself from God. How would you feel if your children moved out of your house, all that you had provided, treated it like it was rags, and started building a mud house? And he wouldn't even speak to you. How would that make you feel? We don't owe we don't owe you anything, they would say. We can do this ourselves. And on the other side, if you will look at from look at that from a mature mind point of view, you know they need you. Well don't you know that our Father knows that we need him, that man cannot build a peace system upon this earth? That man can do nothing because of all the various traits that are that man has inherited from the from the prince of darkness. We need the maturity of our Father to see that peace comes to this earth. We are like a bunch of little kids running around playing government. And God help us the past two months, the past month with the trials and the hearings and so forth coming straight out of Washington, D.C. should make you aware of that. It should make you aware of something else also. So that that has been happening to evangelists and, and our own Senate and so-called the judicial system, the accusations and the claims. Maybe you should think. It would seem to me that a very... I mean, language coming from our Senate that you really shouldn't allow your children to hear sometimes. You should be at least very uh, uh, exp uh, explanatory to them 
or at least explain, to let them hear what came out of our own Senate, the highest office of our Congress, wasn't fit, quite frankly. You should think, has an evil force arrived in this earth such as a false prophet or something like that? Or why is all this? Why? I didn't say had. I'm simply saying you better watch. There is a lot that has happened in the past 60 days that if you're a student of God's Word, that you should be a little bit edgy, but yet totally comfortable and at peace. There are powers dealing in this generation that are not all from this earth. So the Lord came down to see what the children of men build at six, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they, are, and they have all one language, and this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. They're going to, there's no way that I can teach them humility if I allow them to continue in this way. Or it's, at least it's going to be very difficult. Go to, let us go down. Who? The host of heaven. Let us go down. What is that an indication of? It's going to happen again, my friend. Let us go down means what? That divine intervention will take place on this earth. Maybe it already has begun. And there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. And from this, you have seven languages, Hebrew, Greek, Teutonic, uh, Tartarian, Chinese, uh, uh, that, 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 that is spoken in Scandinavia. Galavonia. Those are seven. And basically from those come all languages today in one form or the other. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth and they left off to build the city. They stopped this. Do not be surprised that the scattering this time would resemble, if it should happen and this was a type, the deadly wound. Uh, did I say it would? No. I said be alert. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, which is the base root, the prime root, I'll say it that way, of the Hebrew word Babylon. A lot of Babel going on. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Why? Let us build us a tower to heaven. Let us find or build our own heaven, my friend. I don't care how you want to look at it. That's what angered your father. And I tell you this, why do you think it is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? You need not that I tell you of the time or the season. For when they shall say, peace, 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 then shall come sudden destruction. Meaning, God Himself would return. Do you have to worry about that destruction? Well, I don't know why you would. It's, he's your father. He doesn't want to hurt you. He's only angry at the enemy. And you are not a part of that enemy. So, wherever you are. You see, man is so stubborn. We don't have to build a tower to God. We don't have to build a wavelength to God. We may have to build a wavelength link to each other to communicate, but not to God. Quite the contrary. You do not have to build a wall to protect yourselves. And I'm not saying this to go beyond common sense of the security of your home at night. I'm not talking about that. I'm speaking in a spiritual context. You do not have to build a wall 
to protect yourself from Satan, you already have one. You already have heaven on earth. You already have the kingdom of God within yourself if you have Him. We do not have to build something that is second-rate and childish compared to the perfection of which our wall delivered the children across the Red Sea. That might as well say he changed their diapers and bottle fed them, showed them where to camp put a fire there where they had a light at night, and the poor little darlings got hungry? Did he abandon them? No, he fed them. We don't need another system. We have, when it comes to heaven, is what I'm talking about, dear friend. Keep your minds up here on this level, okay? We have one already. It is our Father's home. And when you start hankying with the so-called unknown one world system whereby everyone can find peace, comfort, and security and retirement into eternal happiness forever. All right? That's what you're hearing. Pretty hard to talk against it. Don't try, friend. There's, when you start talking against peace, well, you shouldn't anyway. It's God's plan. All right, but it re- to probably for our own minds, my mind is going to Deuteronomy chapter one. Let's turn there. Let's just stay way back here in old prophecy, because as it was in the end, so it shall be in the so it was in the beginning. So we better pick up on a little bit of this beginning. We're about to enter a promised land. We're about to enter a new time. Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament, isn't it? I'm, let's see, here it is. I found it. All right, got there finally. Okay. We're going to go chapter 1, all right? And let's start with verse 21. And I want you to know God has just delivered our people across the Red Sea, changed their diapers, heated their little bottle of milk for them at night, and really took good care of them, all right? Now they've come to the great... Pro- the, in the first place, if someone took that good a care of you and then made another promise to you, would you doubt it? If somebody fed you caviar right out in the middle of the desert from nowhere for 40 years and then promised you they would do something else, would you have learned to trust them by that time? I think so. So sometimes I marvel at this. I really do. Until you look around yourself and look at people, and then there's not much of a marvel to it. People are people. And Halloween's coming. Trick or treat. Which will it be? Verse 21, Deuteronomy chapter 1. Behold, the Lord thy God has set the land before thee. Go up and possess it. I give it to you. It's yours. As the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee, Fear not, neither be discouraged. I say the same thing to you today. God has given us a promise, a land, a millennium. It is ours. We do not have to drive stakes to stake stake it out or take out a lien or anything else. It is ours. He has promised it. It shall be so. It shall be done. Period. It's coming. So when you're crossing over to it, watch your step, all right? And you come near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land and bring us word again by what way we must go up. And then that's, that's all right. It's all right to be cautious. Send out scouts. And un- into what cities we shall come. We're going to investigate, spy it out a little bit. And the saying pleased me well. God said that was using common sense. I like that real well. That's okay. So what does that mean to you today? It's all right to be cautious. It's all right to be wiser than the serpent. It's all right to be careful. But just being careful shouldn't stop you from trusting your Father. No way, shape, or form. And the saying pleased me well, and I took twelve men of you, one of a tribe. I picked one from each one of the tribes, all twelve. 
And they turned and went up into the mountain and came unto the valley of Eshcol and searched it out. This means, in the Hebrew it means grape, grapes or grapevine, the vine, clusters, yeah, clusters, grape clusters. In other words, it was there. The fruit was on the vine. And they searched it out, and they took of the fruit of the land in their hands and brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said, It is good land which the Lord our God hath given us. And it is. Have you tested the fruit of the millennium? Has the Spirit brought you back a sample when He answers and touches you with prayer, saying, This is my credentials? To you, that's a touch and a taste of what it's going to be like, beloved. When He prospers you and protects you and when you allow Him, that's His promise. It works today. We've already got it if you claim it. All right? Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. Stiff-necked, hard-headed, stubborn people that can't do it God's way. I'm telling you this, because that whole group under the United Nations does not put God first in forming this system, it's not going to amount to a hill of beans, though it almost will when somebody arrives to give it some push, some oomph. They call him the dragon sometimes. He goes by a lot of other names. And the wise know him and his methods, and they are more intelligent than the dragon. Stay awake. Stay alert spiritually. They wouldn't go. They wouldn't do it God's way. And you murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, He hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Beloved, God had fed them quail, manna, had taken care of them for 40 years, and they accused Him of hating them. And you don't have to look very far. I've seen it in my generation over and over God never blesses me. Sometimes I just almost want to say He doesn't exist. And it makes me just want to get a hold of them and shake some sense into them. So what do you think that air is you're breathing? He created it. And He gives you the right to breathe all of it you want. And He has created this old earth where it will produce pretty good out there if you'll get out there and shake your buns a little bit. It will take real good care of you. Oh, but I don't feel like really getting out there. Well, suffer, fool. You see what I'm saying? People, I guess when God feeds them right out of His hand, they'll come to the table and I'll love well, well, more, more, more. But if they've got to get out there and pick the grapes themselves, they find that difficult. Don't be too sure that that's not what's going to happen on Halloween Day. The grapes may be a little tough because it's not too far from Gat that we'll be discussing. They murmured. The Lord hated us. He loved them. Anytime a, a man feeds his children that well, he loves them. He hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? How, how could we go up there to those cities? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. That's why I brought you here. They've got heaven on their side over there. Their walls go all the way to heaven. They have built them a heaven on earth. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. That's giants. There are giants out there. Hey, God said there wasn't. That's what he said to me a long time ago. There are no giants out there. And do you know something? I believe it. I believe if you've got the courage to step forward and fill the gap, 
believe if you've got the courage to step forward and fill the gap and ask for His help in doing something, He will provide it. He has never turned us down on anything that we needed. <laughs> that we needed to get the job done. Okay? If you trust Him and you love Him. He's with us. Just as sure as if He developed to our vision, though He's there anyway, right before me. He's here. And He takes care of His own. Christianity is not a religion. It is a reality. And I said unto you, then said I unto you, this is God talking to these little brats. Dread not. Neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God which goeth before you, He shall fight for you according to all that He did for you in Egypt before your eyes. You've seen Me take care of you before. Do you think I'm going to stop now? March! Well, maybe tomorrow, God. I've been thinking about trying to do this. Maybe tomorrow, God. Halloween tomorrow is going to come all right, but your tomorrow, tomorrow may never come. But Halloween's coming. And in the wilderness, where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee, He carried you as a man doth bear his son. Oh, a man or a woman could ask for no greater love than that, my friends. No greater assurance. In all the way that you went until you came into this place, and friends, that was it. He had had it with them. Through Joshua's time, he said, I'm going to clean it out and I'm going to make it pretty for you one more time. And then, buddies, your own, your own. If you want to take it all the way to the bottom, take her. It won't be cleansed again until the second advent. That's in the book of Joshua. Verse 32, is that where we got? Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God. We've just, my friends, got into a generation of non-believers. There are churches, and I'm not going to mention any names, where it is written, I haven't held any, any, uh, uh, taken any surveys, but by their own admission, they say that I think it's one that as much as 80% of its own ministers question the virgin birth. Think about that. Eighty percent of their own preachers question the virgin birth. Have difficulty with it. My friends, that's a sad state of affairs. And hey, we won't single out just one. We see some very strange happenings around this world. We call ourselves civilized and we have had man walk on the moon... And yet we have starving people. That it wouldn't take that much to feed, to help them. It wouldn't take that much to, instead of giving them a gun, give them a bag of corn and show them how to make it grow. So we're real civilized, all right. We're real intelligent. That's why the peace system is going to go over real well. But my whole point is this. We already have it if man would but just take hold of it. If the nations, let's leave man out of it, if the nations would but just take hold of it, him, our Father, he would clean it up as he promised over and over and over. And I want you to remember one thing very well as we move on daily and daily after day deeper into this generation. There are no giants out there. When you walk with Him, you can walk boldly and proudly. Well, I might. I don't want to offend anyone. Well, please God and hope that that pleases the people. And if it doesn't, tough luck. Tough luck. Because they need a little shaping up. I know that turns a lot of people off, my philosophy in that, but it's very spiritual. Very, very spiritual. As an old Marine sergeant, I know what makes people tick. 
and as a servant of God, I would be foolish if I did not take part, take uh, advantage of part of the education that you receive in this life that God Himself puts you through to be able to cause people to change themselves. You see, I can't change anyone and you can't change anyone. But if you can get someone just to... If you can just make them mad long enough to say, Well, I'll prove him wrong. All right? It isn't long till you got them if you're right. And if you're wrong, they shouldn't listen to you anyway. All right? But if you're right, you're going to plant a seed. Because the very emotion of man must be jarred at times to get them to see his truth. Does that mean we shouldn't love people? Hey, if we didn't, we wouldn't be here. For it is sad, and I weep when I see. I, I I know people that have attended church ever since they were diapered, and in this own this area right here, a lot of them in the same church all their life. My grandpa helped build this church. They have been faithful. They have attended, and there they sit, ready to fly away. And you know what's going to happen? They meant well. They are good. People, but they're deceived. And you know who did it? Satan. So let that encourage you. But what is your wall? There's one other place that we must go. It's one of the greatest prophets in God's Word. I really say that because he doesn't hide anything. He shucks it down and shells the corn. Zechariah. All right? Let's go in that book of Zechariah next to the last of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 2. Chapter 14 of Zechariah tells you exactly how Jerusalem will be brought back to peace. If don't, we're not going there, but you can make a home assignment and cover it yourself. Chapter 14 of Zechariah will tell you exactly how that peace will come to Jerusalem. But I want to read this second chapter to you, if I may, just a little bit of it, and then we're going to stop. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1. I lifted up mine eyes again and looked, and behold, this is a vision. This is a prophecy. And behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. He's measuring time, and he's measuring Jerusalem. He's measuring the area that will be discussed this Halloween. This is the way it will be is why I brought you here, not the way man chooses. Verse 2, Then said I, Whither goest thou? Where are you going? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof and what is the length thereof. I want to know how big to make it. Verse 3, And behold, the angel that talked with me, went forth, and another angel went out to meet him. Verse 4, And and said unto him, Run and speak to this young man. It, it really, it, it doesn't mean just speak like you're talking. It says shout. You shout about it. We're in Zechariah chapter 2. Now, that's the, that's the next of the last book in the Old Testament, all right? Uh, run and speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem! shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. It's going to cover the whole world. You, you can't put walls around it. But, beloved, it does have a wall. Let's read of it. Verse 5, For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. And I would like to translate the next verse starting with up, up, rather than ho, ho. Ho, ho doesn't translate in this language unless you're looking at trick or treat, all right? It's up, up, come forth, or get up from there and come forth, escape, and flee from the land of the north, for the land of the north, uh, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of heaven, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest... Uh, with the daughter of Babylon. Come out. You afraid? Now listen carefully. How does God still look at you? Because this prophecy has to do with the end time. 
For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoils you. For he that touches you touches the apple of, of his eye. Whose eye? God's eye. Do you know what the apple of your eye is? That's called the pupil. In other words, if somebody touches you, if you're really following him, it's just like they stuck their finger in God's eye. You think that doesn't get his attention? Don't you literally try it. But have you ever had something poke you in the eye? Did it get your attention? It gets God's attention when somebody touches one of his anointed, one of his elect. You don't have to worry about it. I incidentally, I just remembered something, and probably I should wait and just, I'll wait, how, how much time do we have on this? About 40 minutes. Well, I'm just about through. God is our wall, not the nations. It doesn't make any difference how many nations sign what piece of paper. When God said, I scattered them to the four winds, that's Ruach in the Hebrew tongue, and it means the four spirits. And in Mark 13 and Ezekiel 37, you know that it is the Holy Spirit. The four spirits, meaning from all over the world, gathers God's children back together into oneness, into that frame of mind that is Him. So, you've got October the 31st coming, and boy, are we dating this tape. But it's necessary. Watch. Observe. Halloween is coming. There will be many people that will be deceived in a way that, yes, it will make this a better place than it is at this moment for the flesh. But spiritually, it shall become a very dangerous place as one step further, deeper and deeper into Satan's jungle, that we march as the deception that is poured out upon the people. And what is really sad, you know beforehand what's going to happen. You can't miss. Because as Christ told you in Mark 13, Behold, if they say He is here or He is there, believe it not. For I have foretold you all things. Where? Here. In His Word. If you have absorbed it, He has blessed you. So, how exciting to live in this generation as we see the anniversary, the 500th, that five centuries since this great nation was discovered, oh my, how she has blossomed, even with all the adversity. Blossomed into a superpower with love and compassion and freedom whereby we can study our Father's Word at our own will or be whatever we so choose, but at least have a pretty good shot at it. God blesses this nation. He blesses His people. He blesses this hemisphere. Have you ever thought for a moment and compared this hemisphere to the next one over? I speak of Europe. You don't know how lucky you've been because I've been through a few things in that hemisphere myself. That, Betty, if you think you know what rough has and you haven't been through the frozen snows of the Chosun Reservoir with 500,000 Chinese napping at you every step of the way and people dying and freezing to where a corpsman would even have to put morphine in their mouths to warm it enough to inject it. You know, pretty tough sledding over on that hemisphere. We got a bunch of spoiled brats over on this hemisphere that think they know what rough is. They didn't have World War II. They didn't. They've seen pictures of Berlin. They didn't experience it. Some of you have, and I, and I know that. I'm just saying, stop and think. We have been blessed. 
I'm only thankful for one thing, that I had the opportunity to know what blessings really are because I've tasted the other side of that bread also. I know what really rough is. And I know that when people say, I just don't know how we're going to do it to get to that next mountain. It's real simple. Get there the same way you got here. Start walking. You'll get there. All right? You got to be a can do, wide awake, alert Christian in this generation. I'm kind of rambling a little bit now, I guess, because I want to or feel led to. That we see some beautiful things happening around this world. Sad? Yes but they are written. It is God's plan, and boy, is He pushing it forward. It's a time to rejoice, though we see things that are very negative taking place in certain aspects. However, always remember this. There is nothing negative in God's plan, for it all works to the end of bringing forth a positive ending, something in a positive sense, because God loves all his children, regardless of where they're, they're in the Orient, whether they're Slavic, Teutonic, or whichever language they might have been divided into. They are God's children. But God has chosen certain that have obligations and duties to do while your little brothers and sisters sleep. And that is, if he has given you eyes to see, study his word and march and watch. Let us go to His throne. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Father, for the Word. We thank You, Father, for being with us this day. Oh, Father, the simplicity of the touch of Your hand and the power from on high, Father, as You are arranging the events of this hour, we thank You for it, Father. And we thank You, Father, that You have made each of us a servant in Your ministry, Father, of these end times to go forward As your ministry spreads this world, Father, not only Shepherd's Chapel, but whoever you touch and wherever you touch to bring your plan to the surface. We thank you for it. In Yeshua's precious name, amen.